we are going to speak about an interesting topic. And this topic, by God's grace, I started it two weeks ago, last evening service, those that are in here. We started it. And I would like to continue in continuation with it, that topic. Because it seems like this topic, many of us are afraid of it. Many of us, we all give one reason and other not to be part of, uh, not to be part of this. And this morning, I'm going to speak about the topic that says gossiping about Jesus. Gossiping about Jesus. We know we used to call it outreach. We used to call it evangelism. Maybe because we use a big name or a big grammar to call it maybe outreach or evangelism. Maybe that's why the people are afraid of it. That is why this morning I like to name it gossiping about Jesus. Because I know that many of us like to gossip. Is it not true? Let's be honest with ourselves. We like to gossip. We gossip around. We gossip about many things. So this man, that's why I like to name it gossiping about Jesus. You know that people spend a lot of their times gossiping about something which does not bring life. You can hear somebody, you can wake up in the morning, dress up, you tell you that you're going to go and visit so so some person, and you know what he's going to go and do there, only to go and gossip about that man, or about that neighbor, or about that brother, or about this person. And you find <clears throat> that they'll be gossiping about that person, maybe one hour, two hours, three hours, they're not tired. That's what we do, let's be honest. And you find that we are busy killing somebody, speaking bad about people, gossiping about something that we does not give life, something that brings problems, something that brings quarreling. We find about that there are other people, they will take out their, their phone, busy, they'll be chatting on calling, 30 minutes, one hour, busy, what are they doing? Gossiping about somebody. Discussing about somebody. Speaking, spreading rumors about somebody. We does not give life. But this morning, I want us to talk about the gossip that brings life. Gossiping about Jesus Christ. And this is what that brings life. And we know that the Bible says, if you can't turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 28, from 16 to 20. Matthew 28. 16 through 20. Are we there? If we are there, let's read together. Verse 16 says, Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. 17. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted that it, it was really him. Verse 18, Jesus came up and said to them, All authority, all power of absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Verse 19 says, <clears throat> Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, and obey my words, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20 says, 
teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. And, and lo, I am with you always, remaining with you, regardless of circumstances, on every occasion, even to the end of age. Amen. You see, we see here that it is the command, it is the command from Jesus for us, for you, for me, for every believer to go out there and spread the gospel. And let people to be aware of the incoming judgment of God. And let people to be aware that no matter how good they are, that without Jesus, they are lost. Like we sang this morning, I am lost without you. We are lost without Jesus. None of us are sitting here this morning without Jesus. If we fail to surrender our life to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, if we fail to acknowledge how sinful we are, if we fail to acknowledge that our good deeds, our beauty, our education, our intelligence, our riches cannot save us, cannot give us eternal life without Jesus. There is no hope. All those riches, beauty, education, whatever it might be, cannot give you eternal life. Cannot save you. Only Jesus and Jesus alone. And Jesus said to his disciples, go into the world. Spread this good news. Let the people know. Make the people to understand that I am the bread of life. Make the people to understand that I am the light of the world. Make the people to understand that if they turn away from their wicked ways and come back to me, I am willing to forgive them. I will save them. I will remember their sin no more. I will cleanse them. I will give them life, life eternal. That is what it's all about. The gospel that the gossip that gives life. The gospel, gossip about Jesus. To go and tell those your neighbors, those are our friends, those people we see around, our colleagues, our schoolmates, to tell them about Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that was slain on the cross of Calvary for my sins and for your sins, for the sins of the world. Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Jesus Christ, the soon coming King and Lord. Amen. It is my duty, it is your duty as a believer in Christ to go out there and spread this gossip. And this is the gossip that gives life. Not those ones that will go and spread false rumors, we will go and backbite, we go and kill one another, spreading evil, gossip about one another, that bring death. No. This gossip, this gossip brings life. Because it is gossip, the gossip about Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the bread of life. And Jesus Christ is life. The Bible says, Jesus says, I am the way. John, John 10, 10, he says, the thief come to destroy me, but I, but I come to give it life. I am the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus we find life. If we go back to the book of, right down to the Old Testament, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, let's see what he says there. Ezekiel 18, 23. If we are that, let's say amen. Then let's read together. It says, verse 23 says, do I take any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, rather than that he should turn away from his ass and live? You see, see the heart of God. God Almighty says, it is not his pleasure. 
It is not his will for that your neighbor, for that your friend, for that your colleague, for that your classmate to perish. The will of God is for him or for her to come to saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be saved, to be delivered through faith in Jesus Christ. No other way. Not in our ancestors, not in our forefathers, not in our good deeds, not in our education, but faith in Jesus Christ. He is the one that died for our sins and rose again. And he is the one that coming back again to rapture all those that believe in him, all those that accepted him, all those that made him the Lord of their lives. Because he is, he is life. In him is life. In Christ Jesus. This is the heart of God the Father. He says, it displeases him. It is not his will. It is not his pleasure. It is not his desire for any plan to perish. But he desires that all might be saved. All might come into knowledge of truth. In, in the same Ezekiel 33, let's see what he says here. Are we there? Ezekiel chapter 33 from verses 1 to 11. Let's read together. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, speak to the sons of your people. If I bring a sword on a land and the people of the land take one man from among them and make him their watchman. Verse 3 says, and he sees the sword coming on the land. And he blows the trumpet and warns the people. Verse 4 says, Then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood will be on his own head. Verse 5, He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be on himself. But if he had taken warning, he will have been saved his life. Verse 6 says, But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any one of them, he is taken away because of his corruption and sin. But I will require his blood from the watchman's hand. I want us to take note of that. Verse 7 says, Now, as for you, son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel, so you shall hear a message from my mouth and give them a warning from me. Verse 8. When I say to the wicked, O oh, wicked man, you will certainly die, and you do not speak to one day wicked from his way, that wicked man will die because of his sin, but I will require his blood from your hand. Verse 9. But if you on your part want the wicked man to turn from his evil way, and he does not turn from his evil way, he will die in his sin. But you have saved your life. Verse 10 says, Now as for you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Truly our transgressions and our sins are on us, and we are rotting away because of them. How can we live? Now here verse 11. Verse 11 says, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn back, change your way of thinking. Turn back in repentance from your evil ways. For why should you die, O house of Israel? Here, yeah. maybe you may say, I don't know what to tell. I don't know what to gossip about. Tell them, you see, in Medicare it says, change your way of thinking. Turn back in repentance from your evil ways. Forsake your evil life. If you don't know what to tell the people, just tell them that they should change their way of living. 
Change their way of thinking. Change their way, their way of doing things. Tell them how much God cares about them. Tell them how much God loves them. Tell them how much, how God sent his son to come and die for everyone. Make them to understand that every one of us are born in sin. We are born in sin by nature because of the sin of Adam. Because we are, we are all the children of Adam. That we are justified through faith in Jesus Christ. By accepting Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. By amending our ways. And going back to God with a, a sincere heart, with a repentant heart, because God searches the heart. God examines our heart. God knows our thought. He knows all our ways. There is nothing hidden before the eyes of God. Everything is open before him. Where can we hide from him? We cannot hide from God. None of us can save ourselves because we are so good. We need Jesus. This is the good news. This is the good gospel, the good gossip that we need to go out and spread. The good news about Jesus. The Lamb of God who came to die for my sins. Who came to die for your sins? Who came to die for the sins of our neighbors, our colleagues? our friends, our neighbors, even our fiscal enemies. Those. Jesus died for everyone. And all is calling me and you today to go out and carry the good news. Before we continue, I'd like to ask Mr. Smith to put me quote number one. What does he say here? He says, every congregation is a missionary society and, a, and every Christian believer, a missionary, inflamed by the love of Christ for his fellow man. Are we inflamed by the love of Christ? If we are inflamed by love of Christ, we will go out there and gossip and spread this good news about Jesus Christ. Remember what he says there. He didn't say every pastor. He didn't say every church council member or every worship team member. But he says, every believer, every Christian believer, that is including me, including every one of us that call ourselves believers in Christ, every one of us is included. If we are inflamed by love of Christ, I think St. Paul says, the love of God compel us to go out If the love of God, we have that true love for God, and we have love for our neighbors, for our friends, we have to go out and make them to understand about the incoming judgment, about the wrath of God. That's why you need to come on Wednesday evening to study together. We talk, we study about the, the wrath of God, the book of Revelation and the book of Ezekiel. What is going to happen in this world? The incoming judgment, the incoming wrath of God. We need to go out. When the love of Christ, when the love of God inflamed me, it will make me to go out and share this, and spread this gospel about Jesus Christ and tell the people about them. No, I will not care. Yes, when, you go, when I go out there, you are going to encounter many problems. You are going to encounter many, many people will reject you. Many people will call you, despise you. But you don't need to give up. You need to continue to carry out this gospel of truth. Now, I want to... 
I want us to turn our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 4. I want us to see one of the greatest gossipers in the Bible. John, chapter 4. This is about the woman of Samaritan. Are we there? If we are there, let's read together. We are going to read verses 21 to 30, then we read verse 35, and then finally verse 39. So let's start from verse 21. Jesus replied, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father, neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know what you worship. We Jews do know what we worship, for salvation is from the Jews. Verse 23. But a time is coming, and already here, when the true worshippers we worship the Father in spirit, from the heart, the inner self, and in truth. For the Father seeks such people to be his worshippers. I want us to take note of that verse. God is spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Verse 25 says, the woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ, the anointed. When that one comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. Verse 26, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he, the Messiah. Verse 27, just then his disciple came, and they were surprised to find him talking with a woman. However, no one said, what are you asking about, or why are you talking to her? Verse 28, then the woman left her water jar and went into the, society, into the city and, begin, and began telling the people. Verse 29, come see a man who told me all the things I have done. Can this be the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed? So the people le left the city and were coming to him. Verse 35, verse 35 says that, Jesus, maybe, let me start from verse 20, 34. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to completely finish his work. Do you not say it is still four months until the harvest comes? Look, I said to you, raise your eyes and look at the fields and see they are white for harvest. Finally, verse 39. Now many Samaritans from that city believed in him and trusted him as savior because of what the woman said when she testified. He told them all things that I have done. See, you see this woman, a great gossiper. When she encountered with Jesus, this woman was a woman of Samaritan who when Jesus went to the well, she came there to draw water and Jesus asked her for a test. And she started to tell Jesus that, that they are Jews. They are not supposed to ask water from them or have anything to do with them. Then as the conversation continues, Jesus started to ask her about her husband. And that she told Jesus that she doesn't have them. Jesus tell her that about that this the man you are not seeing is not your first husband. And then after everything, what did this woman did? The Bible says, see... She carried the news immediately. She didn't waste time. The Bible says she left her water jar, maybe let me put it this way, her bucket of water. She leave it there by at the well. There she goes, off she goes to the city, spreading the gospel, gossiping about Jesus, calling the people to come and see the man who told her all that she had done. She's spreading it around all over. To everyone that she see, she telling them about Jesus. And what happened? The Bible said, the people all 
from the city, the all coming down to the world to sue Jesus. You see, a good and a faithful gossiper. She, she didn't waste time. She went out and told the people, come and see, come and see, come and see. Come and see Jesus, come and see this man. Maybe he might be the Messiah we are waiting for. Who had told me everything about my life. Come and see him. She carried the news everywhere, spreading it everywhere. And the people all following her. And remember when we read here, we see when the disciples of Jesus, when they came back and met Jesus speaking with her, they were asking, why is he busy speaking with her? Likewise, when you and me, when we carry out this gospel, people might see you, oh, maybe they know that the person you are talking to, maybe might be a prostitute, maybe might be a, a, a drunkard, maybe when they see you talking to her, they begin to say, oh, they will look down at you and say, why is he busy? What is he busy talking with doing with this prostitute? Don't he know, he know that this is a prostitute? Or maybe he is proposing her. They might even think about that, accuse you of many things. But, you know, that is the tactic of enemy. That's how the enemy works to make you to be discouraged, to hinder you and me, not to spread that gospel to that person, to get saved. We, that's why we need to be on guard. We need to be careful and watchful. And that is why we say that before we go out, we need to spend time praying before we go out. For the Holy Spirit to lead us. For the Holy Spirit to guide us. People will make mockery of you. People will try to discourage you. But don't give up. Like this woman. She went off she go. Spreading the good news wherever. Telling them, come and see. Come and see this man. Come and see. My, maybe he might be Jesus Christ, the wedding Messiah. Come and see the man who has told me all that I have done in my life. The man who has told me everything that is going through in my life. Come and see. And the same thing also, that's what God wants me and you to do to carry out this gospel, to go and tell the people, to come tell them about Jesus, who changed our lives, to tell them about Jesus, who knows who, everything about us, to tell them about Jesus, who the Son of God, who came to die for our sins on the cross of Calvary, and rose again, and is coming back again in glory. Hallelujah. To go out and tell them about the incoming judgment of God, the wrath of God, like we hear in the book of Ezekiel, when he says, when the watchman see the evil coming, he had to blow the trumpet and warn the people about the incoming judgment. And this morning, brothers, sisters, brethren, believe in Christ Jesus. It is our duty to go out there and blow that trumpet and tell the people about the incoming judgment of God, about the wrath of God, and tell the people that Jesus saved, that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is true, that Jesus is alive. Amen. We don't need to sit in the church. Only we need to go out. Church is meant where we come together. When we go out there and spread this gossip, this good news, we bring them here. Then the pastor as the shepherd, he will shepherd them, he will teach them. You see the duty of the pastor. He will teach them. He will take care of them. He will disciple them. So they also, they also will grow in the things of the Lord and also will be able to go out also and spread the good news about Jesus. It is me and you, every one of us that call ourselves believers in Christ. It is our duty to carry out this gospel. We always say our lifestyle is all about our life. It's not only about our lifestyle. 
If it was only about our lifestyle, Jesus would not tell the disciples to go out and spread this gospel. Yes, our lifestyle counts, but we have to go out and spread this gospel. When we see and hear all that is happening in the world today, we listen to radio, we listen to television, we read newspapers everywhere. That love will inflame us to go and test and tell the people to be ready to change, to amend their ways and to surrender to Jesus. And make them to understand because you know the enemy is a liar. At times he make people to people to believe that they are so sinful that God will not forgive them. That is why it is my duty and your duty to go out and tell them and tell them, oh, I tell them, no, I tell that man, even though you are a drunkard, even though you might be a thief, even though you might be a murderer, even though you might be an idol worshiper, even though you might be a prostitute, there is still hope for you in Christ. Amen. There is still hope for you in Christ Jesus. If you can surrender your life to Jesus today, he will change you. He will forgive you. He will cleanse you. He will, all those sins, like it says in Malachi, in Micah, it says, I will throw them to the base sea. I will remember them no more. When we, last week, when Brother Robert was preaching, he spoke about, he mentioned about uh, Jonah. You know, when God asked Jonah to go to Nineveh and spread, the Bible make us make me to understand that when Jonah went there to the name, finally when he agreed to go, when he reached to the city, when he entered the city, he started to cry and say, Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days. Nineveh will be destroyed in 40 days. That people should repent from their sins. The Bible says, immediately people start to hear about this. The Bible says, they call a fast. They call a fast, even though their king or the president never even yet had a, the news never reached to him. But the people who already heard about it, they start to take action. They start to take action. And when the news reached to the king, and the king also proclaimed a fast. But what I'm trying to say, the people who first heard about the news from Jonah, they take action already. Maybe let's read here. Let's go to the book of Jonah. You will see it here. You find Jonah in Old Testament. After Obadiah, to find Jonah. Jonah chapter 3. Verse 4 says, if we are there, let's read, start to read from verse 4. He says, Then on the first day, well, on the first day work, Jonah began to go, began to go through the city. And he called out and said, Forty days more. Forty days remain, then Nineveh will be overthrown. Now listen to verse 5. The people of Nineveh believed and trusted in God, and they proclaimed a fast and put sackcloth in, in penitent money from the greatest even to the least of them. Verse 6 says, When the word reached to the king of Nineveh of, of Jonah's message from God, he rose from his throne, took off his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in dust in repentance. You see, before even the king can proclaim order, the people already who first heard about it, the people said they take action. They believe in God. They trusted in God. They repent. They mourn. 
from their wicked way. They ask for forgiveness. They repent. They change their way. And when the news reached the king, and the king also declared a fight, he rose. He humbled himself. So this morning, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, my fellow believers in Christ, it is our duty. Let's take it action. Let us put it into action, the word of God. Another thing I want us to make us understand again this morning, that God can use anyone to speak to us. God can use a little as you, Caleb or Chris to speak to us. And when God speaks to us, let us not despise the word of God. Let us not say in our heart, who is he or he is she or who is this little boy that can tell me? Because God can speak to us through anyone. If God can speak through a horse, he can do anything because he is God. Let us not harden our heart when we hear the word of God. Like when Michelle was saying, praying this morning, he says that, that the word of God convicts us. When the word of God convicts us of something, let us change our ways like the people of Nineveh did. When they hear about the message of God, the word of God convicted them. And what did they do? They take action. They didn't ignore it. They didn't say, who is this man? Or they didn't say, who is this madman? They take action. They amend their ways. They change their ways. And finally, I know many of us want to be there in heaven. When we go reach to heaven, we want to hear God saying to us, Welcome or well done, faithful servant. Many of us want to be there and see, oh, the mansion or the blessings that prepare for us, for those that obey, for those that heed to the word of God. That is why I want to ask we ask Mr. Smith to put us the last quote for us this morning. Let's read together what he says there. He says, Every impulse of Holy Spirit leading men to the goodness and to God is noted in the books of heaven. And in the day of God, the workers through whom he wrote will be commended. They will enter into the joy of the Lord as they see in his kingdom those who have been through their instrumentality, their instrumentality, and they are privileged to participate in his work there because they have gained a fitness for it by participating in his work there. You see, it's not going to be wonderful there in heaven. Maybe you see that man there. Yeah. Oh, that man will come to you say, Oh, good man, I remember you preached to me about Jesus Christ. You told me about Jesus Christ, the Savior. And, and I believe in you. And now I'm in heaven, I'm rejoicing. Or we say to Amos, You witness to me. Or to Steve. Or to Gailey, You witness to me about Jesus Christ. It's, it's not going to be joyful. How joyful it will be that day to see those commending those and also God commending you and saying, yes, my child, you did a great job while you're on the earth. You spread the gospel. You spread this gospel. You are not ashamed of it. You are not ashamed of me. No matter the persecution, no matter the difficulties, you are not ashamed of me. You carry out the gospel. You are faithful to me. You will be rewarded. And you will be partaker in the work there in heaven. What a joyful, what a glorious, what a great privilege it will be. So my dear brothers and sisters, this morning, let us go there and gossip 
about the good news of Jesus. Amen. Finally, in closing, <clears throat> in closing, you know, you know that I'm a good singer. Even Alene, already with me, Alene, we're going to do, do audition today with my little ones, the mic and the club and the presents, we go to our own audition. But before we do that, <clears throat> there are these songs here, it says, We have had a joyful sound, Jesus says, Jesus says, Spread the gladness all around. Jesus says, Jesus says, bear the news to every land. Climb the stairs, upcrawl the wave. Onward is a lost command. Jesus says, Jesus says, with it on the rolling tide, Jesus says, Jesus says, take to sin as far and wide. Jesus says, Jesus says, sing ye island of the sea. Echo back, ye ocean wave, Esha Hiki, a jubilee, Jesus say, Jesus say. Take the sinners all around, spread the gospel far and near. Over the ocean and wave, Jesus save and Jesus save. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Before I pray this morning, maybe you are sitting here this morning, and you are hearing the message of God, and you are not sure if Jesus come today, you will be going to heaven. You are not sure, or you have never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Don't allow this, don't allow this opportunity to pass you by, because there is no guarantee in this life. You always hear me say that there is no guarantee in this life. Anything can happen at any time. Our life is like a vapor. It's just in a, it's just in a trickle of eye. It, it will just vanish away. But ask yourself, where will your soul go? Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Have you invited Christ as your Lord and Savior? Today, receive him. Open your heart. Accept him. He's willing to forgive. He's willing to save you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we give you all the thanks, we give you all the glory, we give you all not your holy name, Lord. You are wonderful, you are excellent, you are glorious, O oh Lord, our God. Lord, thank you for your holy word this morning, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering to our hearts, Lord. Father, I pray this morning, as we hear your word, O oh Lord, May this word be planted in our hearts, Lord. Help us, Lord, to take action, Lord. Like the woman of Samaritan, Lord. Like the people of Nineveh, Lord. That when they had their, your word, Lord, they didn't hesitate. They didn't say tomorrow, next tomorrow. They put it in action, oh Lord. May it be our heart desire, Lord. Holy Spirit, imprint us, Lord. Ignite us, oh Lord. To apply this word, Lord. To make it our heart strong desire, Lord. To go out, Lord. And spread this good news, Lord. Lord, all over, Lord, and tell them that Jesus saved, and Jesus saved. May your name alone be praised, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.